So very good morning to all of you. Today, we'll be taking the session on human resource management. It is for whom? It is actually for you. That is electronics and communication engineering students. That is BTEC in EC, fifth semester student, right? So you are habituated in studying all the electronic subjects, engineering subject, technical subjects, mathematics, and etc. Doing labs and etc. But today we are going to discuss about a different management subject, which is in your syllabus. That is human resource management. This is of utmost importance because if you want to run any organizations, human resource plays a very important role. Because, say for example, who is developing the electronic devices like a mobile phone? Definitely, there are robots, but ultimately, there is a human being who is behind that. So why you are studying engineering? So you would be working in some organization as a human resource of those organizations. So managing the human resource is one of the most crucial tasks in any kind of organizations. So say for example, why you are studying this subject of human resource management? Because at the end of the day, whenever you will be entering into an organization, at the beginning probably you will be working as an uh, engineer, junior engineer, senior engineer like that. But whenever you will be getting into a team leader position, you have to handle human resources because as an individual capacity you cannot work for a longer period of time whenever you will be moving ahead with the organizational hierarchy you have to handle human resources so that would be your one of the you know crucial job so that is the reason you have to be very good in human resource management and that is the reason this subject has been included in your syllabus so that you can become a good manager it, it is not that you will be becoming a marketing manager or sales manager you can be an engineer production engineer or electronics engineer but however you have to handle the people under you after a couple of years right so that is the reason knowledge of human resource management is very very important for the you know engineers so we are going to study the basic concepts of human resource management today so we'll be discussing about the uh, chapter one uh, of uh, this uh, particular paper uh, in this so, so it is uh, you know trust me it is not very difficult uh, so just concentrate uh, on this ppt and we'll be trust me we'll be completing the first chapter by today only so the, this is the fundamental concept uh, you know this is the uh, human resource management that is a part of uh, your uh, syllabus uh, that we are going to discuss today the uh, paper code is oeac 506 c uh, right uh, so that that's the things and i am professor amita Bhagupta, probably you know i'm the head of the department of the mba and will be i'll be uh, i'll be taking uh, this paper for you for uh, for this year so the, in this chapter, whatever, what are the things we are going to study? So you are going to study the meaning and definition of human resource management and the functions of human resource management, qualities of HR managers, objectives of human resource management and the scope of human resource management. So again, I'm repeating what are the things we are going to study today? Meaning and definition of human resource management, functions of human resource management, qualities of HR manager, objectives of human resource management and scope of human resource management. So let us understand what is this human resource management is all about. So human resource management is uh, basically the process of managing the inflow, internal flow and the outflow of human resources within an organization, right? So again, I'm repeating what the definition human resource management is the process of managing the inflow, internal flow and the outflow of human resources within an organization. So what is this inflow? Inflow means taking the people within the organizations. Like say for example, you are in the fifth semester, right? So whenever you will be in the seventh semester or the eighth semester, the companies will be coming for the campus drive, right? So the campus drive means they are going to coming for what? They are coming for campus recruitment. So they are there to take you within their organizations. So that is called the inflow. Inflow means taking the people within the organizations. Internal flow means so when the people are moving within the organizations, there are different and activities that has to be conducted and the, it is the duty of the human resource management department to manage those activities so that is the part of the internal flow and the outflow of the human resources means when the people are moving out of the organizations in different way you know the HR manager has to handle those activities as well so that is called uh, the outflow so let us you know understand this concept a little bit more detailed manner so inflow so inflow indicate that I have already discussed that inflow indicate the process of taking the human resources within an organization, right? So it consists of two steps: number one, recruitment, and number two is selection. So probably the is a the, you know confusing terms for everybody that you know both the terms are same. That is recruitment and selection, and there is no difference. But there is a difference. So what is recruitment? Recruitment is the process of attracting the right kind of candidate, and the selection is the process of identification of the best possible candidates from amongst those who have applied. 
So recruitment means, say for example, one of the company is coming for campus, right? And uh, your placement department or the principal of the college have given you a notice for the interview. And the notice, it has been mentioned that those who are interested, please apply, right? So that means those who are interested, they are applying. So that means the company's objective is to ensure maximum number of students should apply for the position so that is called the attraction attracting that uh, you know the right kind of candidate maybe the company is looking for btech in electronics graduate freshers so that means they want the people who are only btech in electronics engineering students they should apply it is not meant for civil it is not for meant for computer science it is not meant for electrical so who is the right candidate right candidate is the electronics we take electronics candidate, right? So that is called the recruitment. So recruitment is the process of attracting the right kind of candidate. So we'll be discussing in details what is this recruitment is all about. So in understand, recruitment is the first step in the overall human resource management process that we are going to discuss. There is a, in the inflow, the first step is the recruitment. Next one is the selection. So recruit in the recruitment stage, what uh, the, whenever you are applying for the position, that means you are getting attracted and you are applying for the position. So that is called the recruitment. People, I mean, the company want you to be attracted for the position and want you to be uh, to apply for the position. So that is called the uh, recruitment and selection means identification of the best possible candidates from among those who have applied. Probably you, you, you guys are, uh, you people are actually uh, preparing uh, for uh, different GD, aptitude test, uh, interview, etc. So that is are the part of the selection process, selection steps actually. The companies will be checking different uh, types of tests like the group discussion, the interview, the aptitude test, etc. These are part of the selection. So in the recruitment, we are asking everybody to apply. I mean, those who are eligible, please apply, please apply. I mean, all the BTEC electronic students should apply. But in the, that means that is a positive process. That means we are asking everybody, we are attracting everybody to apply. But in the selection process, what is happening? So we this is an elimination process. So that's why selection is a negative process. Maybe say, for example, 60 uh, students of SVIST have applied uh, for a particular position. Okay, uh, uh, 60 students of BTEC electronics. Out of that, there is a vacancy of 10. So they are going to select only 10 candidates if they found any suitable candidate, definitely. It does not mean that they are having 10 vacancy, they have to select the 10 people because they, if they find a suitable candidate, then only they will be selected. So uh, so that's the fundamental concept of selection means. So if you can, uh, I mean, they will be taking the test according their, according to their requirement. It may be a group discussion, it may be a aptitude test, uh, you know, the personal interview, technical round, different things. So that is called selection. So these are the selection tests through which the best candidate would be selected. I mean, the top, say for example, I'm having 10 vacancies and there are 60 candidates or 100 candidates. So out of that 100, I'm going to uh, eliminate 90 candidates. Okay, eliminate 90 candidates, I will be selecting the 10 candidates. So that's called the selection. So this is part of the you know inflow process because we this is the techniques or this is the tools or this is the activities we are doing for what? To take the people within the organization. So that is why it is called inflow. Okay, so inflow means recruitment and selection. Uh, it consists of two steps, recruitment and selection, where recruitment comes first, then the selection. Next one is the internal flow. Internal flow means it indicate the activities of the human resource management while the employees are moving within the organization. That means you have been selected. Now you have joined the company. Whenever you have joined the company or the joining process has been started from there, the internal process will start. Okay, internal process will start. So internal flow will start actually. So managing all the activities related to the internal flow when the people is or the employees moving within the organization. So that is called internal flow. So internal flow consists of several stages, several functions are there. Number one is the induction. What is an induction? Induction means when the people are getting, uh, you know, acquainted with the organization. I mean, it is the duty of the human resource management department to make the people familiar with the rules, regulation, culture of the organization. So that you can feel comfortable within the organization, right? Otherwise, you'll be not feeling comfortable. You know, you'll be you are coming. So, for example, if you are uh, talking about the fresher side, but directly from the campus, uh, you are happy to do the college life. Now, the corporate life is totally different. Now, what is expected from you? What you can do? What you cannot do? What is the rules? What are the regulations that we need to discuss? So that you know to make the people familiar with the organization. So that is called the induction. Induction plays a very very important role. Um, you know, the, for every hiring, especially for the fresher side. So we'll be discussing in details in some other classes, but let us understand what is this induction is all about. And induction is one of the activity of the internal flow. Next is the training and development. Of course, you need to uh, they train the people. I mean, those who have hired, they are freshly, you know, the, again, we are talking about only fresher side. 
so the people have joined the company uh, so that these people needs to be trained right say for example uh, the you need to work on a particular platform like sap now that you don't know sap now the company will be providing a training on sap so that you can start working on sap right so that is called training you know uh, that training will be provided maybe uh, in uh, your job involve a lot of communication english communication you know written communication you have to write emails etc so that is the reason they are providing a training on the in this kind of english communication email writing and etc so that is the training and development next one is a performance appraisal the performance appraisal is what nothing but uh, you know performance appraisal means your examination in your college in your university is your performance appraisal because how you have performed in the examination whether you have got a o e etc right so that is your performance appraisal so in an organization how you are performing that will that will be evaluated a, a structure would be given to you that in this way you are expected to perform whether you are perform as per the expectation they are going to check that so that is called the performance appraisal we'll be, again we'll be discussing in detail in some other class next one is the compensation management why you are working ultimately like um, for a particular CDC that has been offered to your company, I mean, um, by the particular company. So you are expecting a particular salary at the end of the month. So it is the HR department responsibility to ensure that your salary or the employee salary should be credited on a particular day of the month as per the company criteria. Right. So that is called compensation management, employee relationship management. That is very interesting. I mean, uh, I mean, you have to maintain a very good harmonious relationships with all the employees so that the employees are, you know, will be working for you, motivated. Uh, so that, that's all. So that, that is the kind of that is called the employee relationship management. We'll be again discussing in details in some other class. Discipline management, you know, that discipline, you know, uh, if you're not coming on time in the college, probably some of your faculty members is not allowing you to enter the class. If you are not uh, having the attendance of a particular percentage, so uh, there is a guardian call in your college. Your principal is asking your guardian to come and meet. So that is a disciplinary action taken by the college and the universities and the schools. Probably you have encountered some of you, right? Discipline. So in the organization also, there are some discipline. Because otherwise, what will happen? The people will not be behaving in a particular desired manner. Like the, if the office timing is at 10, you have to come at 10. If you are coming at 10, 5, uh, I mean 10 past 5, uh, then what will happen? You, there will be late mark. And if there is a three late mark, your one day sick leave will be deducted. So this is a disciplinary action that will be taken, right? Uh, you cannot, uh, you know, abuse it uh, to the, some of the people. If, uh, I, I mean, uh, uh, to your colleagues, if you are abusive, so a disciplinary action will be taken. You know, sometimes cracking jokes can be a disciplinary action. I mean, a disciplinary action can be taken against you because you are cracking a joke, which is hurting somebody. So you have to be cautious. What are the things you, you can do? What are the things you cannot do? So th these are the things. So this, managing the disciplines uh, is very important. Like, say, for example, dress code in the college life, if we are not having any uniform, you know, Sometimes uh, in a normal days also we are find, find uh, you know going with an informal uh, dress. I mean in a jeans or a t-shirt. But in the office you cannot afford it, right? You cannot do it on a Monday to the Thursday. If it is a you know five days a week, then Monday to Thursday you have to wear a formal dress, okay? And uh, you cannot wear a t-shirt or a jeans in on Monday to Thursday. On Friday you can wear. I mean jeans uh, or you know informal wear. But of course there are maybe some uh, rules that you cannot wear a. Uh, round neck t-shirt you have to wear a collar t-shirt so these are the discipline you know that we will be again discussing in details in that particular chapter of the discipline management later on so grievance and like grievance what is in grievance grievance is nothing but the sum of related to complaint like you are not happy with the canteen of your college uh, i mean the food quality of the college so if you are discussing within yourself that yes you know that food quality is not good or the food is very expensive whatever you are discussing among yourself so that's a complaint but if you are making it official to the appropriate authority of the college then it become a grievance so this in the organizations also there is a process of grievance and the employees may not be happy with something someone some policies right some structures so you have the authority to discuss the same thing officially with the appropriate authority and it is the human resource management department job to handle those grievances right handle those grievances and manage those grievances next one is the industrial relations so managing how probably you have heard about the, the term strikes lockout or the you know labor union and etc you know managing all these activities i mean you know managing the uh, employees managing the government policies managing the you know management policies along with the labor union is a job of the human resource management department so industrial relation is very very important we are going definitely we are going to study in details about this chapter as well trust me next one is the hr outflow outflow means when the people are moving out of the organization how the people can move out of the organization how the people can be separated from the organization it can be a natural retirement like at the age of 16 
if the age retirement age is 60 and the person is retiring at the age of 60 so that is called uh, natural uh, retirement voluntary retirement probably you have heard a lot of about it uh, that is a vrs that is voluntary retirement scheme maybe due to some of the economic condition or the social condition maybe some how the comp employees uh, may voluntarily retire i mean the at the age of 40 they may retire at the age of 45 they may retire as per the policy as per their wish they may retire this is voluntarily voluntary retirement uh, next one is the termination the company based on some, uh, some of the disciplinary actions or something like that uh, the uh, person can be terminated okay next one is the resignation a person can get a job a better job in some other company that's why he is leaving the company so that is resignation it may be due to death right uh, disability some met with some accident so the people cannot work anymore so that's why they are separated so complete the full and final settlement of all the employees related to any kind of separation like it can be a natural retirement it can be a voluntary retirement it can be a termination resignation death or disability so complete the full and final settlement is actually the role of the hr manager so again we'll be discussing in details now you know probably you are finding it interesting uh, you know about the activities of the hr manager you are planning to become an hr manager in future um, right in your organization maybe so but you need to ensure you are having these qualities within you so that you can become a successful hr manager so now we'll be discussing qualities of hr manager so number one knowledge and expertise in hr so that's true right i mean if you are not having a very good knowledge and expertise in hr how can you become an hr manager so you have to have a good knowledge and expertise in hr next one is the engaging presentation skill you have to be a very good presenter because ultimately you will be dealing with the people so if your end uh, presentation is not engaging people is not going to listen to you first, right so that's the thing so engaging presentation is very important next one is the ability to multitask you know trust me the age of people has to do a lot of work right not a single work right they will be preparing and coming and developing a mobile phone and go back no first you know you are having a lot of activities so that's why you have to be you know able to do multitasking Next one, be able to deal with the gray areas. Gray areas means there are some confusion. You'll be handling different issues or different confusion. Somebody have told you that I have been mentally harassed by that particular person because he said these things to me. But you need to understand whether is that a harassment or not. So that, that's the issue. Like, um, so I'm uh, getting uh, disrespected by somebody with this word. You need to understand whether this is a disrespectful word or not. You need to understand. Is that a grievance or not? You need to understand. Is it a complaint or not? Is it, you need to understand. Is it a disciplinary problem or not? You need to understand. So that's why there are a lot of gray areas. So you have the, you should have the capability to handle the gray areas. Next one is a strong sense of ethics. I mean, you should be able to differentiate between what is right and what is wrong because people will be, you know, eyeing at you because you are the person who would be taking the right and ethical decision. If by chance you are taking some unethical and a wrong decision, then, you know, people will be losing trust on you. So that's why, you know, strong sense of ethics is required. Strong communication skill, definitely, because you are a communicator. You are a communicator between the management and the employee labor union and the employee government and the employee. So you have to communicate a lot with a lot of people. So that's the reason you should have a very good, strong communication skill. And of course, you should have a leadership quality because you have, are actually leading the people. It may be the laborer, it may be the employee, maybe the HR department, any other activities. So definitely you should have a good leadership skill. Ability to motivate others. That's true. I mean, you you know, people are to be motivated by the HR. Who else is going to motivate the people? You have to develop the strategies how to motivate the people, you know, keep the people motivated. Right? So that's the idea. So ability to motivate others. Next one is the strong conflict management skills. Because there would be conflict in the organization, and it's the HR manager's jobs to handle the conflict. Because conflict means differences in opinion. There would be differences in opinion. The opinion of the uh, you know, union leader is not going to match with the opinion of the management and the opinion of the government will not be matching with the management. You know, employees opinion and the employer opinion will differ. But it is your responsibility being an HR manager to handle those conflict. So that is the reason you should have a very good quality of the conflict management, conflict management skills. Right. So if you are having these qualities, if you think you are having these qualities, if you think you can develop these qualities, you can be a very good successful HR manager. Trust me. Next, uh, objectives of human resource management. Right? So we have already studied that. So we are, I have just pointed out, pointed it out for your uh, you know understanding uh, of the subject. Right. So number one is to achieve the organizational goals by proper utilization of human resources. Our organizational objective is to be the number one smartphone uh, manufacturer or smartphone seller in Indian market. 
so you need to use the human resources accordingly then only you can become the number one smartphone seller in india like xiaomi right number one to develop uh, maintain healthy working relationships among all the employees and to adopt sound desirable organizational structure that we have discussed that you have to you know maintain a harmonious relationships with all the employees all the department all the stakeholders to integrate individual and the group goals within the organizations what is the organizational goals being a number one smartphone uh, company in india that is the organizational objective and you need to integrate with your personal objective human resource objective right next one is to create opportunities and the facilities for the individuals and the group development according to the growth and development of the organization you need to ensure the growth of the employees along with the growth of the organization because if the employees are not seeing any kind of you know career development opportunities he has joined as a junior engineer after 10 years he is having the same designation junior engineer so automatically he will not continue for a longer period of time so you have to ensure that you are you know ensuring growth of that particular employee otherwise he will not stay back okay uh, next one is is uh, to identify and satisfy the individual and the group needs such as the fair wages and the salary incentive welfare facilities social security prestige recognition security status everything you know take care okay social security social image okay the wages salaries incentive everything you need to take care so this is one of the another objective of resource management next one is uh, to motivate the employees and keep their morale high that we have already discussed to develop and maintain healthy relation between the management and the employees that we have repeated literally this is one of the job next one to develop the human assets continuously to training and development program that is very important we need to upgrade the people probably you know that recently cap gemini have declared they are going to upgrade the skill sets of 50000 indian employees they are investing crores of rupees for that why i mean all the companies i'm just giving you that example of the cap gemini rounder but the, all the companies are investing crores of rupees for the development and the training and development of the employees why because ultimately these people will be outdated they will not be able to work with the new technologies or the systems so right so that is the reason training and development is very important next one is that you contribute uh, in minimization of the socio economic evils such as the unemployment problem inequal distribution of income and wealth more employment opportunities for women itself so these are the you know, broader aspect to provide an opportunity to the employee to participate in the management that is a part of the employee participation management and the employee relationship management to provide desirable leadership and lead the working group that's true to provide healthy and hygienic working conditions to the employees that's true because due to this covid 19 era this is one of the major function you know if you are asking your employees to come to office you have to ensure their they know health and safety rather why the most of the companies like probably you know that recently facebook have declared that all of their employees will be working up to 2021 july from working from home so that is one of the hr decision related to the health and hygiene lot of companies are thinking like that i mean uh, let let the employees continue from the working from home uh, because there is a, uh, this pandemic is going on right uh, next one is that you retain the workforce by maintaining the stability of the employment that's true that you have to provide and stability to them so these are the major objectives of human resource management scope of human resource management that we have already discussed the functions that we have discussed that inflow internal flow and outflow of human resources the function we have discussed these are the scopes so that we have mentioned that the scope of hrm is wider in comparison to the personal management and since joining the organization till the retirement that is inflow to outflow joining means inflow retirement is outflow so all the activities uh, of a worker under the hrm so large number of activities that we have discussed the recruitment selection training development promotion transfer job evaluation all these things are in the scope of human resource management so we have already covered that whatever i have promised to cover in this sub chapter that is what is a human resource management what are the function of human resource management what are the scope of human resource management role of hr manager and the functions right so that we have already covered so our the first chapter of this particular topic we have already covered these things so if you have any questions so definitely we have given you the forum you can ask the question put the questions we and definitely we'll get back to you so we have already covered these things i mean uh, the first chapter is over so please go through it so if you have any issue please get back to me thank you so much thank you for attending the session